The member for Melbourne. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister for the Environment and Energy. Huge advances in renewable energy and storage technology mean that the electricity sector can more easily cut its pollution than agriculture or transport can. Yet, despite demanding that states and territories compromise and agree to your national energy guarantee, you yourself have refused to compromise on the poultry emissions reductions target set for electricity. In fact, you even want to lock it in and tie the hands of future governments for 10 years. Given your refusal to negotiate in good faith on the pollution target for electricity and to thus make other sectors do the heavy lifting, can you now tell the House what are the government's emissions reduction targets now for agriculture and transport? The Minister for the Environment and Energy. <coughs> well, Mr Speaker, we won't take a lecture from the Greens Sorry. who call Senator Jim Mullen a war criminal, Mr Speaker. Sorry. We won't take a lecture from the Greens who are celebrating when people's houses are burnt down and blaming it on climate change, Mr Speaker. Now, the reality is that emissions on a per capita and GDP basis are now their lowest in 20 eight years, Mr Speaker. That's the record of the Turnbull government, and we've done it without a carbon tax. We've done it without a citizens' assembly. We've done it without a cash for clunkers, Mr Speaker. We have delivered lower emissions in electricity and in other areas, Mr Speaker. Now, when it comes to renewables, we have seen a record investment in renewables under the Turnbull government. Australia is now the third most attractive destination in the world on a per capita basis for investment in renewables and the seventh most attractive de destination over overall in the world, Mr Speaker. At the same time, we will not compromise the affordability and the reliability of our power system. The Greens and the Labor Party want to shut down our coal-fired power stations across the country and sell out the blue-collar workers in the member for Hunter's electorate. He wants to sell out the workers across his electorate the in the Minister member for, for Shortland. He wants to sell out the, the member for Melbourne on a point of order. The question was about targets for agriculture and transport, and the minister the could address for, those. Member for Melbourne. Uh, will resume his seat. The minister will just wait. I'm going to rule on the point of order, if that's OK with him. Uh, I'm going to make two points um, uh, to the member for Melbourne. Members, members, member for Mallee and others will cease interjecting. Certainly the last part of the mem member for Melbourne's question was about those uh, uh, two specific policy areas of agriculture and transport. The problem for the chair, of course, is um, the preambles to questions that ministers are entitled to address. And in the case of independence questions, they tend to be lo longer, given the longer time limit they have for their questions of 45 seconds. That's beyond my control. I've made that point uh, on numerous occasions. But I do say to the Minister for Energy and Environment, none of the preamble or the specific questions from the member for Melbourne I was about to intervene, relate to the opposition. So he needs to confine himself to the question. <laughs> Speaker, in relation, to the, in relation to the land sector, the Emissions Reduction Fund has reduced emissions and contracted for emissions for 190 million tonnes, Mr. Speaker, at an average cost of around $13 a tonne. A very effective pressure, a very effective, effective policy, Mr. Speaker. And when it comes to the transport sector, we've invested through the Clean Energy Finance Corporation in electric vehicles and the rollout of emissions there. But, Mr. Speaker, when it comes at the end of the day, to reducing emissions, we will also ensure the affordability and the stability of our energy system. We've committed to 26 to 28 per cent, and we're, just as we achieved overachieving on our 2020 target, we'll meet our 2030 target too.